Let's cross over to Abuja. Here's Makwe, Ogun Yusuf. Makwe? Hello, Ijoma. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, has invited Deputy Senate President Ike Ikwerimado for questioning over alleged money laundering. The commission made this invitation in a letter to Senator Ikwerimado dated Tuesday, July the 24th, and is expected to report to the EFCC the same day. The letter was signed by Mohamed Abba, EFCC's Director of Operations. Senator Ikorimadu is expected to offer explanations on why his name featured prominently in an ongoing money laundering case being investigated by the Commission. Meanwhile, leaders of the People's Democratic Party have paid a solidarity visit to the home of the Deputy Senate President following the alleged invasion of his home by the police. The Deputy Senate President, who gave an account of how policemen invaded his house for several hours, condemned the police action and thanked the party members for their support. The national leader of the PDP, Mr. Uche Sakundos, on his part, asked President Buhari to defend the nation's democracy and rights of every Nigerian. So the people who came to block my house and then to lay, lay siege in my house, my compound, and instead of these quarters, they left out about 12.30 after spending about six and a half hours. So, and now my colleagues were able to come in. Those who wanted to come in before this weren't able to come in. Now they are here. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you for this support and solidarity. Let us stand for our democracy. We must remain strong for the national people to ensure that we are able to reverse this kind of uh, impunity that's going on. When, and then we have to enthrone a new Nigeria where justice will be upheld, where there will be rule of law, and where there will be respect for human rights. And Nigerians will be able to have the full benefit of democracy. So what we are seeing now is a decline in our democracy. So we hope and believe that Nigerians will stand, stand strong to ensure we put this thing behind us and be able to make Nigeria uh, a better place, progressive, united. So this is a, a new day for democracy. We call on President Buhari to defend democracy. The assault on democracy in Nigeria must not be tolerated either on the legislature or other structures of the executive arms to the state level or on the judiciary. We must be a country that must defend the rule of law. Now, while that was going on here in Abuja, 22 members out of the 13-member Benue State House of Assembly impeached the Speaker, Honorable Terkimbi Ikiange. The lawmakers also elected Honorable Titus Oba of Kian Constituency, a PDP lawmaker representing Logo State Constituency, as the new Speaker. Now, this followed a motion of a vote of no confidence by Honorable Richard Uzegi, representing Konshisha State Constituency, against the leadership of the 8th Assembly. But the impeached Honorable Ikiange is insistent that he remains the Speaker of the House. The House, the 8th Assembly of Benue State, is a house that has, has come to do what the people have sent them here to do. And once they have noticed that there's anything that will tarnish the image of this 8th Assembly, the House will rise to that challenge. And that is what the House has done just today. I am a speaker and will continue to be the speaker until the right procedure is followed. And if the members, for whatever reason, when the right procedure is followed, feel I should no longer be the speaker, that can be accepted. But as I speak with you now, I am the speaker of the Benin State House of Assembly. I say I have a deputy, I have the majority leader, the deputy majority leader, and other principal officers, because what has happened is meaningless as far as I am concerned. Well, it's not all politics, but that will be all from Abuja. <laughs> it's back to you, Ijoma. Thanks a lot, Mark. Bear. We're going back there because shortly after the drama at the National Assembly, police authorities issued a statement insisting that the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, must honor their invitation for questioning on the infamous of our bank robbery of April the 5th. A statement from the fourth spokesperson, Mr. Jimo Mashud, says, quote, if the Senate President refuses to honor the invitation, the police would not hesitate to use all the instruments of law to ensure compliance with the law, end of quote. The statement also denied media reports on the alleged invasion of the Senate President's residence and that of his deputy by police officers in the morning. Mr. Moshud says in his statement, quote, 
The fourth wishes to categorically state that there was no authorized deployment of police personnel to besiege the residence of the Senate President or his deputy, as reported in the media. The police personnel seen in the pictures in the media were those in the convoy of the Senate President and others attached to him. End of quote. The Inspector General of Police had asked the Senate President to report to the head of investigation team at the Intelligence Response Team Office in Abuja to answer questions on his alleged involvement in the robbery where no fewer than 30 people were killed and six banks robbed. The police claimed that some of the suspects under interrogation indicted the Senate President in their confessional statements and that they have admitted to being the political thugs working for the Senate President. But Dr. Saraki has denied all the allegations and any knowledge of the suspects. The three-day closure of the third mainland bridge for investigative maintenance tests earlier slated to begin on July the 27th has been shifted to August the 24th and that's according to the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola. The shutdown earlier scheduled to last from July the 27th to the 30th will now last from August the 24th to the 26th. Mr. Fashola says that the shift in the date was arrived at after due consultations with the Lagos State Government and wider deliberations on other relevant stakeholders. He explains that the date shift was done in order to give succor and relief to the people of Lagos State and other interstate road users and to support the efforts of the State Government. To education, where the University of Lagos has held its first pro-Chancellor's Distinguished Annual Lecture Series with a focus on the health sector in Nigeria. The lecture, which was delivered by a professor of immunology and infectious diseases, titled Responding to Nigeria's Disease Outbreaks and Epidemics, Ebola, Zika and HIV, exposed some findings in research into the 2014 Ebola outbreak in Nigeria. Our correspondent, Ini John Nekwa, reports. <laughs> Academics of the University of Lagos march into the venue of the first Pro-Chancellor's Distinguished Annual Lecture Series. And as they settle down, the chief host, the Pro-Chancellor, Dr. Lawali Babalaki, takes to the podium to explain the importance of this initiative. The objective of this lecture is to harness talent, to bring to this country gifted people from all areas of human endeavor who have contributed to advancing knowledge. Knowledge in the area of health has been chosen for this lecture with a title Responding to Nigeria's Disease Outbreaks and Epidemics, Ebola, Zika and HIV. The special guest of honor and Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, totally agrees that the topic is timely as it coincides with what the government is doing in preparing for outbreaks. We have trained more people. We've trained over 300 field epidemiologists across the country. And we have the largest pool of trained field epidemiologists who are surveillance officers. We call them the disease detectives. Professor. To deliver the lecture is a professor of immunology and infectious diseases at Harvard C. A. Chan School of Public Health, Professor Phyllis Kanki. She begins by sharing some posing unanswered questions from the 2014-2015 Ebola outbreak. Why are there some people who will, who will suffer from the disease and continue and, and survive it. Attempts to answer these questions have led to the development and study of T-cell-based assay. It's been used to develop an HIV-1 vaccine for subtype C uh, by Yi Chen Lu and others at Harvard. And it's also, um, the toxin system has also been used to uh, develop a T-cell assay for tuberculosis that's currently being used and marketed in China. At the end, everyone agreed that it was a worthwhile lecture, which stakeholders in the health sector could build on to fortify the country against outbreaks. Ini John Mekwa reporting for Channel Television News. Let's take a look at some business news now, and here's Kayode Ukikiolu. Many thanks, Ijeoma, and welcome to Business News. The third meeting of Nigeria's Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee in 2018 ends today with a surprising announcement of a buyback commercial paper program and a lending window for banks to high-impactful sectors of the economy, 
tied to the cash reserve ratio of the CBN. The meeting, however, kept all the key monetary policy indices unchanged, despite the more diverse voting pattern among the MPC members. Our correspondent, Temple Ashaju, reports. We are here again. A few questions from the media. At the end of the communique presentation by the Central Bank Governor Godwin Mefiele, wraps up the MPC meeting that considers a wide range of issues. Energy. Members of the committee considered major developments in the global and domestic economy to arrive at a whole decision. The committee decided by a vote of seven members to retain the monetary policy rate at 14% alongside all other policy parameters. The takeaway for economists, analysts and the business community is the announcement of a new two-pronged program of strong credit extension to the private sector via direct lending and the issuance of long-dated but low-yielding commercial papers. The CBN may, if need be, buy those instruments to complement the efforts of the deposit money banks. In addition, as a way of incentivizing deposit money banks to increase lending to the manufacturing sector and the agri sector, a differentiated dynamic cash reserve requirement regime will be implemented to direct cheap long-term bank credit at 9%. This development is welcomed, but it's caught analysts unawares. You know, we've seen consistent mom pops for the past maybe two, two and a half years now. So you're going to be lending to your some sectors at nice and they come to the market again, you know, to and, and, and more put up at about, about eleven. At about eleven or twelve level. What they are just gonna do with this is also to leverage on the low uh, cost of borrowing which the central bank is going to provide. Okay. You know, but of importance is the structural issues that create a lot of imbalances uh, well, that we need to address. With analysts surprised at the new bank credit program, the next few days and weeks are expected to be active on the market streets. Temple Ashaju, Channel Television News. And now to the petroleum sector. Nigeria and Niger Republic today signed a memorandum of understanding to build a hydrocarbon and pipeline refinery to process about 150,000 barrels of crude oil per day. The agreement signed by the Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachiku, and Niger Republic's Energy Minister, Fumakai Gado, was witnessed by President Mohamed Buhari and President of the Republic of Niger, Mohamed Isufu, in Abuja. The project, regarded as mutually beneficial to both countries, will see the construction of pipeline that will supply crude oil from Niger to the new refinery, which is to be located in a border town in Katina State. President Buhari says the refinery will be private sector driven, with the full support of the government of both countries. And committed to its brand positioning as Nigeria's leading mobile internet service provider, Airtel Nigeria is offering new customers on its network 100% bonus on any data bundle purchased. In a statement, the Frontline Telecom Network explains that its customers will also receive eight times bonus on any recharge, which will be split along various categories of accounts. With a new offer, Airtel looks to empower more Nigerians, improve productivity, and help consumers stay connected with their friends, loved ones, and business associates. The 100% data bonus offer is available to new customers and valid for 90 days, beginning from the day a customer joins the network. And renewed sell pressure by investors pushed the local equities market back in the red after Monday's moderate rally. Uche Aluku has more details on today's trading. Welcome to the Stock Market Report. Key market indicators fell to negative territory at the close of today's trading after renewed profit taking across all major counters of the NSE, excluding the insurance sector. The All Share Index dropped by 70 basis points, shedding over the 30 basis points previously added on Monday, while the total value of listed equities depreciated by 93 billion naira. Sell-offs was felt mostly by the share price of Beta Glass, Lafarge and Presco in the top three category, while Qtix maintained the top spot for a second session up by 10%. Total volume of shares traded for the day increased by 152.42 million units from the previous session, 
with the shares of Medview Airlines as the most sought after for the second day by the same margin of 100 million units. And that's the stock market report for today. I'm Uche Alaoku. Thank you, Uche. Strong earnings from Google's parent company Alphabet pushed Dow Jones up 200 points as earnings season gets into full swing. Let's now see how the markets ended Tuesday's session across board. And that's business news. I am Kayode Okikelu.